information. Um, so I think uh, when Andrew uh, or when Skills for Change uh, initially approached me last year, um, I was a bit taken aback. I was like, oh, well, what did I do to, <laughs> to get to get this um, uh, this opportunity? And so I was very humbled by it. And uh, for me, I took it as a learning opportunity and uh, really an opportunity to uh, advocate for immigrant women um, who are often left in the margins uh, in whatever sectors you're in. Um, often women in general tend to be left in the margin. Um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that Skills for Change uh, had to actually analyze their, uh, their processes and how uh, their intake process and programming is impacted by not being or being gender inclusive or you know, it's an opportunity for growth. Um, in my in my life, I think I mean I came to Canada when I was 15 years old. Um, I was born in Zimbabwe. I not lived there, but I was born there. Uh, my mom uh, left. Uh, my mom was a single mother. She left uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, you know, uh, to work in international development. Um, she uh, got divorced when she was very young. So she had us when she was. Um, I guess she had me when I was 20, so every time she reminds me, when am I getting those grandkids? Uh, but, uh, but, but you know, uh, she had us when she was very young, and she left uh, Zimbabwe uh, around, you know, I think in her late 20s. She had left, went to Burundi, which was then a country that no one had ever heard about, um, and her parents probably asked her, what's wrong with you? You should stay married. But she was uh, in, she was, you know, unfortunately my, my father was abusive, and so she, uh, you know, took herself to school, um, despite the fact that she had these two kids that she was taking care of with no support from, from anyone. And so she went on and uh, somehow managed to land her job in international development. And uh, since then, um, unfortunately, when she was still in Zimbabwe, she worked uh, during the, uh, I guess, uh, the process of independence for us uh, in the 80s. And so uh, she left partly because she didn't want to be involved any longer with, uh, with the current government. Um, so her political past followed her uh, to our last country of residence, which was Kenya. And, um, you know, uh, it was a very difficult decision for her to decide to move here with uh, two kids who she had no clue how she was going to get a job. She had no, no networks, no social networks here to support her transition. And so, after this day, I always ask her, how on earth did you do that? And why would you do Why did you just go back home? But she didn't go back home because to her, Coming to Canada was an opportunity for her to, to start a future for herself. My mom's very, anyone's met who has met her, Andrea's met my mother. <laughs> she is uh, one heck of a woman. She uh, very, very independent. She went back to York University to do her master's at, in her late 40s. Who does that? <laughs> you know, but she did. You know, and so it's so inspiring to me just seeing how she's, um, you know, told her own story and has not allowed anyone to tell her story for her. So. She is honestly an inspiration and, and, and a great reflection of what challenges immigrant women face uh, when, when, we, when we come to uh, this country that we don't have uh, uh, social connections or any connection really. Um, so I start from that because honestly I would not be here, it's very cliche, but I honestly wouldn't be here if it weren't uh, for her. Uh, for her bringing me here and allowing me to have opportunities that I'm being exposed to here. Um, so I think very early in my in my life, I realized that um, because I have such an independent mother who figures everything out for herself, somehow she manages to send us to school and get us the best everything. Uh, I realized very early that I needed to do that for myself too, because I want to be able to tell my children that hey, you know, you gotta buckle up and <laughs> make things happen for yourself, because if you don't take life into your own hands, and if you don't tell your own story, someone else will tell the story for you. Um, I went to Montreal for university there. Uh, it was a very enlightening experience for me, and when I came back, I realized uh, that it wasn't so easy to get that job. I'd, gone to, I'd done the university part, and I thought I'd nailed that, but then I realized there was the job part, which I quickly realized that, oh, I don't have that uncle to call. Uh, to give me that summer job. <laughs> and so uh, that's a barrier that immigrant women face, right? Because if you do not have that uh, network that we have, those networks that we have back home, 
you're not going to be able, or at least you're more limited to getting that opportunity, no matter how talented you are in many cases. So um, I was lucky to land uh, an opportunity at the Maitri Foundation, and, um, and Ratna, I know, definitely has a strong relationship with, with Skills for Change, but the Maitri Foundation, to me, uh, taught me how there are people in this city that are genuinely interested in advocating for women in leadership, immigrant women uh, to have opportunities and access, and not tokenizing immigrant women, because that's the other thing that tends to happen. Um, I think uh, Skills for Change uh, has attracted a, a very diverse uh, group of women and uh, recognized that, you know, the women, they're different types of women and women have different interests that appeal to them. So not every woman is necessarily interested in, uh, you know, leadership as we know it, or not every woman uh, is interested in whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate that Skills for Change acknowledges the fact that we have women from different perspectives. Um, over the years, I've gotten, I've, I've been lucky to, or fortunate to work with uh, different populations, with immigrants. Uh, so I worked with foreign trained professionals for a couple of years, and there I, I saw firsthand the, the sort of barriers that come when a, a woman comes into Canada, has the credentials, everything, speaks the language in many cases, but then somehow faces that that block that happens, right? So. Um, it was so difficult for me, and I think that was very eye-opening to me because I always used to ask questions about their children. Like, how are your children handling this process for you? You know, your husband, you know, you came with your husband. It's like, my husband is off at work. He doesn't even notice that the kids right now are, you know, having a difficult time in school. There are all these other challenges that the children are facing. And women tend to be the ones who, who pick up those pieces that somehow people don't think who's picking up, who's helping the kids with the homework. You know, um, so that inspired me to start my own organization, ImmigrantYouth.org. Um, so it's, I'm very, very committed to uh, working with young immigrants because I think it's, it's, um, it's a great disservice not to create opportunity, meaningful engagement, whether it's meaningful leadership opportunities, meaningful employment opportunities, not just employment, not just a job, because the whole job thing, you know, uh, we see it all the time when uh, immigrants come to, to, to Canada, and particularly women, they tend to be confined to precarious uh, employment. So you get the contract job, that the contract ends in a couple of months, and then, and then what? How do, how do we create opportunities for people to be able to, you know, not just have a short-term opportunity, but a long-term impact? So in my current job, I manage um, uh, newcomer programs. Uh, at For Youth Initiative, but then I also obviously uh, run my organization at the same time. Um, it's interesting because when I look at the emerging woman, the 19-year-old or the 25-year-old woman who comes to Canada, um, and, and, and I look at the opportunities or the, the beaming lights and excitement that she might have and how quickly it sometimes gets um, dispelled really, uh, I, it disappoints me that we're still at that place. Uh, skills for Change, I think, with this GBA uh, uh, project, I think, opens that door to that conversation of how are we actually meaningfully engaging young women who are coming to Canada all the time because they are ultimately the future of, of, of Canada. And how do we not let them slip through the cracks? Um, I've been really lucky to have had the year to see how this project uh, has been realized. I sat in on some of the focus groups. I cried sometimes <laughs> because of what the women were sharing. Um, I really do encourage, like I think the whole how do we get women, immigrant women, uh, how do we move the needle on the issue, it's really in everybody's hands because no matter where you work, no matter what area of, or sector you work in, there's always the issue of immigrant women are, where, where is the immigrant women at your dinner tables? Where are they at your work and your, wherever you hang out, where are they? Are they there? Are you creating meaningful opportunities for them? Mm -hmm.